What's up, Wolfpack fans? We have a special Locked On crossover episode today. We're joined by Alex Dono of Locked On Canes to discuss this primetime matchup coming up on Saturday night. Kenton, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking Canes. We're going to be talking key players. We're going to be talking x Factors. We're going to be talking predictions. All things NC State Miami. Maybe we'll pick the pack this time. Maybe we'll stick with the reverse psychology. Stick around. Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. Happy to be, and I'm outnumbered, so I'm going to have to have like my hot takes fast and furious by Locked On Wolfpack, my guy Kenton Gibbs, who also co-hosts Locked On College Football Kickoff Live with me, and Grayson Boone down below, who does a, a fantastic job. How are you guys? I'm great as always, man. I'm, I'm always happy to see the uh, Italian betting guy and, and to be on your show, <laughs> to, to grace the show, the infamous Locked On Hurricanes. I'm glad to be here. Dono, I tell you what, a lot of teams and coaches might circle a particular game on their schedule. I've had this crossover episode circled on my schedule. Very excited to get into it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's an honor to be on you guys' shows as well. And you know how we like to start these crossovers? Big storylines for our teams. Uh, now, on Miami, I, I think they're, they're, there's good and bad. So I'm going to yeah. cheat here, and I'm going to give two. And I'll, I'll start with the good. And that's really been Ruben Hurricane Bain, number 44 on Miami's defensive line. I mean, he's elevated the play of that entire D-line. And I did hear Dave Doran, the NC State head coach, uh, singled out Bain and talked about him during his uh, pregame press conference this week because uh, he's, he's really been unblockable. And it's something that, uh, as a true freshman, I started to notice this about him even watching spring football. Like, okay, this kid's going to get on the field a lot this year. And he's been in his bag uh, the past couple of weeks, guys. He's had four sacks uh, in the last two games, so two apiece in these last couple of games for Miami. And the entire defensive line uh, last week against Virginia produced six sacks. It was a really good day for Miami's D-line, and Bain's really been eating. So it, it's like one of those things where you have to wonder, is he just going to keep getting better every week, or is there going to be a letdown at some point, or – Maybe he gets double teamed a lot, but uh, he's been really a, a revelation. And then, you know, on the flip side, the not so good storyline for Miami. This has shown up in both of their losses this year and even their, you know, narrow wins, self-inflicted wounds. Um, guys, we're going to do our predictions before this episode is over. It's always difficult predicting a Miami game because you don't know which version of Tyler Van Dyke is going to show up, right? First four games of the year top graded by pro football focus quarterback in the entire country uh, in his previous three starts. It's been a completely different story. He's thrown three interceptions, two INTs and another two INTs, seven total in his last three games. Uh, so it's, it's one of those things where anytime you go into a Miami game, you're thinking, Hey, if, if they go turnover free, they've got a good chance to beat most anybody on the schedule. That's just not always been how this has played out. So Every Miami fan holds their breath when they're driving down the field. Are we actually going to cash in for some points, or is this going to be another one of those Georgia Tech type of uh, situations? But, I mean, Grayson, uh, what do you got for NC State storylines this week? The biggest thing for NC State is finding some sort of momentum to be built off of this Clemson win. Can we stack two wins on top of each other? And, you know, beating Clemson is a big deal for NC State. That's one of our top matchups every single year. But beating Clemson has now made this Miami game even bigger. NC State, you know, much like you mentioned with Miami, NC State has had the issue of repeatedly beating itself. We talk about it nearly every single week. The self-inflicted wounds with pre-snap penalties, turnovers, drop passes, you name it. And so last week against Clemson, a lot of that seemed to get cleaned up, at least to a certain extent. We only committed, I think, two penalties. We didn't turn the ball over at all. Just a small sample of drops near the end. but. We did enough to knock off a Clemson team. Now, Miami here, they're going to be a lot more physical, I think, than Clemson was last week. And so NC State is basically going to have to repeat that effort and then step it up a notch. So will they be able to do that? That will be a big question. And, you know, a lot of that focus is going to come in the offensive line. You mentioned Ruben Bain. If I didn't know any better, he might be licking his chops in a matchup like this one because the NC State offensive line, we've had some adjustments to be made, some shuffling around just to get some sort of consistency there. And so they're certainly going to have their hands full with the Miami pass rush. Yeah, I thought I was going to agree with Grayson. I mean, the the negative story has been the offense outside of Kevin Concepcion and MJ Morris. I mean, let's just be very honest about this. You know, Robert and I have said, when your number is called, be relevant. 
And um, everybody said, I'm good. RSVP, click no to that, please. We're not going to attend that party. But we're hoping that guys do show up this week. And the the positive story, you know, you're wearing Ken Dorsey number 11, but we've got a number 11 of our own over here. That can do it. He can absolutely go. His name is Peyton Wilson out of Orange High School in Central North Carolina. The young man has pro, pro stock all in him. His big brother's a pitcher in the MLB. I don't know what his mom and dad did, but I'll tell you what. They made magic multiple times with those ones <laughs> because this Peyton is one of those ones, man. He's one of those guys that absolutely gets it done. But honestly, it's not just about him. This defense at large, everybody has shown up. Jalen Scott, week by week by week, has gotten better and better and better. If you watch the tape, the Sam linebacker, strong side linebacker, the guy to the wide side of the field, for those of you who don't know, he is the guy that has gotten better and better and better each week. And you kind of said to yourself, what is this linebacker going to linebacker core going to be having to replace a, a, a Drake Thomas? You know, young Draco did everything for the team. And then you have to replace Isaiah Moore, one of the most cerebral linebackers that I have ever heard of. When you heard, hear about him, all you heard was cerebral, cerebral, cerebral. He knows where the ball's going. He knows where the play is going 24-7. So, um, you know, you're you're kind of looking at the defense around him and saying, man, Sean Brown is stepping up any position that he has to play. Shaheen Battle has had his struggles, but for the most part, he's been effective as well. Aiden White has been as good as it, as good as predicted uh, for most of the season. And, of course, that defensive line with Davin Van, I mean, you know, I'm living good off that van stock. I bought it early. And at this point, I've sold off half of it and I never got to work again. So, <laughs> you know, this is this is a team that from top to bottom, defensively, you're looking at a juggernaut. Offensively, you're like, do something, please. Please. It's the, it's the <laughs> meme of poking them with a stick saying, come on, do something. It's it's not quite the level of Iowa's offense, but I believe our bag of chips is very close to their bag of chips on that shelf. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I'm learning a lot. And I'll, we're going to break down key matchups when we come back. North Carolina State trying to improve to six and three. Miami trying to improve to seven and two. And I thought it interesting when Grayson talked about building momentum off a of victory over Clemson. We were saying a lot of the same things about Miami last week. And it was weird because they didn't play well against Virginia, but they found a way to win. So it's like, is that momentum? Maybe, hopefully. Uh, but we have so much to get to. We're only getting started on this epic crossover episode, Locked on Canes and Locked on Wolfpack right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Oh, my friends, I am only getting started on prize picks. It is the most fun I've ever had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy platform in North America, the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you just pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections, and then you watch the winnings roll in. Guys, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a couple clicks. And it takes less than 30 seconds sometimes, well, 60 to 30, depending on what kind of a mood I'm in to make these selections. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code. Locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. That's price. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college. It truly is daily fantasy made easy. Thank you so much for making this locked on crossover. Your first listen today and guys, it's almost Friday. I'm for real this time. It's almost Friday locked on college football kickoff live every Friday with Kenton Gibbs, me, and Drake Toll. We take a look at all the big games, all the big storylines, 11 a.m. to noon, streaming live on these YouTube channels and all the Locked On College YouTube channels. I hope you guys tune in 11 a.m. to noon Friday, Locked On College football kickoff live. Uh, now, you know, I was hearing everything you guys were saying about the NC State offensive line. And so my key matchup, now I already talked about Miami's pass rush, but to me, key matchup that could decide a victory in Miami's favor, I think is shutting down NC State's running game. Because I'm looking at, uh, you know, a young, a lot of promise in MJ Morris, but a young quarterback, if Miami can keep NC State to third and longs 
and then Miami can pin their ears back and not allow NC State to run the football. Then you get the pass rush going on third downs. I think that could absolutely be a recipe for success. So, you know, I, I look at Miami's defensive line, which has been banged up, but thankfully players like Ruben Bain and Branson Dean, who just came back from injury last week, he really stepped up. Leonard Taylor has been uh, really good the last couple weeks for Miami. Jafari Harvey. Um, I'm looking at that as a really, really important matchup because something about Miami, guys, is – They've not been very good in recent games on third downs, and a lot of that has to do with the distance, third and shorts. They've even given up some kind of fluky third and really, really long. So winning on third down, slowing down the running game to me, if Miami can do that consistently, I think they've got a pretty good shot at going on the road and getting a win. So, I mean, Kenton, I'll start with you. What do you look at as key matchup or matchups in this game? You know, I 1,000% agree, agree that it's going to be uh, up front. Um, in terms of NC State's offense. But defensively, I think it's also going to be the front. And I think that it's going to be about the running game as well because let's just be honest, right? If I found a woman who looks at me the way that Tyler Van Dyke looks at Restrepo, baby, wedding, <laughs> wedding, wedding bells are going to ring. You know, I'm going to put a ring on this here finger. You know what I mean? I'm going to give somebody my last name and a couple kids or whatever the case may be. But the reality is very simple here. NC State has to stop the run. That's what's been getting Miami by. While Tyler Van Dyke has been struggling mightily, Miami has been able to control the clock to some extent and kind of do what they need to do in terms of controlling the pace of the game via their running game. Because, I mean, let's just be very honest about this. Tyler Van Dyke's been a little veckless. So if we are looking at a game that NC State can win, the most important thing for NC State to do, in my opinion, I know that the, the running game, I have no doubts in my mind that NC State will come prepared for that. But for whatever reason, I don't know what it is about Miami quarterbacks, because first it was TVD a few years ago when De'Aaron King – actually, no, first it was De'Aaron King came in and looked like a Heisman candidate. Then TVD subbing in for De'Aaron King came in and looked like a Heisman candidate. And now we've got TVD back again, but a sort of reduced version of TVD that has not been the same guy that we saw in the past coming in. And I, if you allow three straight of these performances where it's like, Oh, man, he, he's just hot as fish grease, and he's just dropping on the bucket everywhere. Well, congratulations. The, the Hurricanes will walk out of Raleigh feeling very good about themselves. Yeah, in, in addition to NC State's offensive line trying to limit the pass rush from Miami, my biggest matchup to keep an eye on is Tyler Van Dyke versus this NC State secondary. And leading up into this Clemson game last week, I talked about the importance of making Cade Klubnik beat you because this season, he's had his struggles in some of the decision-making and so on and so forth. Tyler Van Dyke got off to a blistering start in the non-conference, had an injury, and has come back and has kind of cooled off a bit in ACC play. NC State is going to have to beat Tyler Van Dyke in this game. Because I do believe in order for Miami to put this game away, they're going to have to throw it consistently. I think the NC State defense, or the run defense like Kenton mentioned, they're going to show up. And despite a couple couple lapses and gap discipline and over pursuing the run defense has been very solid all year I expect that uh this Saturday night as well and so the secondary is gonna have to show up against Tyler Van Dyke and I didn't forget a couple years back down in Miami Tyler Van Dyke said I don't think they can stop us and then the NC State defense went out there and said well I guess he's right we can't stop him so I didn't forget people don't forget NC State secondary needs to get their lick back in this game, and it's going to come against Tyler Van Dyke. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, interesting quarterback storylines for both of these teams, right? I mean, you know, Van Dyke has had his struggles. A couple weeks ago, Emory Williams started against Clemson for Miami and did a good job managing the game. And with NC State, uh, you know, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing from MJ Morris. But heading into this season, I thought this was going to be Brennan Armstrong's uh, second coming. Like, oh my, this is the perfect fit. He's got his old offensive coordinator there. What the heck happened to Brennan Armstrong this year? You know, I'll say this. Sometimes on paper, right? We've, we've all done this. I think we've all lived enough life to experience this. You know, when you had that girl that just everything about her on paper was perfect, right? Perfect background. You know, you two get a lawyer where you have the same interests and all that. And then you get around her a little bit and you're like, eh, it just ain't it. It just, it's something's missing. Something's misaligned. Something's off here. That's kind of what it was with Brendan Armstrong. You know, it the I I talked about a lot um, the fact that 
Coach Doran had said in the preseason, we're not going with the best guy. We're going with the most experienced guy as a what moment because, you know, uh, my brother in Christ, this is not high school or little league football. This is you're getting paid millions to do this. Your children won't have to work because of this. You better play the best guy or else. But with that being said, I thought to myself, you know, if Brendan Armstrong goes out there and I, I didn't think he was as physically capable as MJ Morris, but I thought between the ears, he should win that competition simply because he's an older guy. He's played in the system already. And that's where he should get going. Lo and behold, I don't think that he had ever thrown the ball to a third read one time um, in, in the red and white. And so, you know, I always said, if he can't do that, then you have to hand it off to the young guy, because if we're going to have a guy that's putting the ball in, in danger's way anyway, let the young guy do it so he can learn. Oh, that's not a pass. They got to, we're, we're going an out route, a quick out against a uh, uh, hanging cover too. That pass probably ain't going to be there. It's not going to be there, and I need to not do that. Um, let him learn that for years three and four and five, potentially, where he can get it together, as opposed to a year six guy who's doing that where it's like, this is it. You're probably going to be selling car insurance next year, brother. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it was a disappointing situation. You know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in regardless of what my sources say, I'm not in practice every day. I've got, you know, people who feel their ways or tell me what they – have what they believe is going on in the in the practice in the games and all that but at the end of the day the coaches are there and it's they make the decisions not me right like this is locked on Wolfpack not the Wolfpack coaching staff you're talking to so I believe that they had the, their the pack's best interest in mind it just became very very clear very quickly that he had to go and after that Louisville game it would have I mean he ended the game throwing up what was essentially a punt and you know, it, it wasn't like this was like a fourth down helmet. This was the first play of the potential game winning drive. He throws up an arm punt instead of taking a sack. You can't let that guy keep playing. So, you know, that's kind of how that went. Yeah. For Armstrong, I mean, my my expectations was a little bit of a roller coaster in the offseason, being that getting him to come to NC State, I was skeptical because MJ Morris was slated to be the guy. You yeah. bring in Armstrong to reunite with his OC, and I thought, okay. On paper, like Kenton mentioned, that does make a lot of sense to me. I can see a situation where this would work out. And so as the season drew closer, I started to buy into that. And then it was just kind of a perfect storm of a lack of execution from Armstrong himself. And then you heard me mention some of the O-line struggles and the wide receiving core has not quite stepped up outside of one guy in Casey Concepcion. And so, yeah, ultimately you you reached a point where you, a change had to be made. It was made. I do believe that MJ is a an upgrade. He has been. Of course, his youth has shown at some specific times. I think he's still kind of growing and learning through it. But we do think the world of MJ Morris, he can be a rock star when it's all said and done here in Raleigh, but still kind of still kind of growing through it this year because some of the growing pains are still here despite the change at quarterback. So when I think about an X Factor player in this one from the Miami side. You mentioned Concepcion, and that kind of gets me thinking about his Miami equivalent is Brashard Smith. He doesn't get as yeah. many reps as Concepcion does. And in fact, he probably should get more reps. Mario Cristobal even said that this past week, that they probably need to find more ways to get the football in Brashard Smith's hands. You know, you can line him up in the backfield uh, at times when the running back room has been really banged up, like against Clemson. He busted off uh, an 80-yard run. Uh, you know, he can make things happen in space as a receiver. So someone like that, especially when you've got a quarterback who has been picked off a lot when throwing downfield lately, get it to a guy like uh, Brashard Smith underneath, let him work some magic. Uh, I, I think he can be someone who can be an X factor player in this game because when he touches the football, good things tend to happen. I don't think he got nearly enough touches in the uh, Virginia game from Miami. So I, I kind of look at, uh, the way Concepcion is used. I, I, I did hear, I think, Kenton, you mentioned this week, maybe he gets used too much, right? I, I want to yeah. find kind of the happy medium with Brashard Smith. Maybe don't, you know, don't throw to him maybe as much as you currently throw to Restrepo, but a little bit more than you do already, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'll tell you this, my uh, my X factor for, for this game, it, it has to be one guy because if this guy shows up and does well, that means that five other guys are showing up and doing well. Mr. Michael Allen. He is a back that 
he has proven that he has big playability. He has proven that he has excellent contact balance. He reminds me a lot of Sean Alexander when he was in college in terms of like, he, he is not as big as Sean Alexander, but his contact balance is amazing. Like he's just like a human pinball. Guys just knock him around. It's like a weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. He just keeps moving forward. He just keeps gaining yardage and all that good stuff. And the reality is that he is a guy that would have to do something. Uh, you know, at, at some point in time, when you look at this Miami defensive line, you have to, have to, have to give them something besides teeing off at your quarterback. The way that these guys use Bain, he is everywhere. He, he he rushes from the one technique, the three technique, the five, the seven, the wide nine. He is everywhere. And if you let them figure out, okay, Bain is having the most success against this guy, this is where we're going to leave him all night because you are continuously in third and longs because you're not picking up yardage consistently on first and second now with your run game, it's going to be a long night. It's going to be a long night. So I think that Michael, getting Michael Allen going has to be a key for this NC State offense. Every time I hear the last name Bain, I can't help but think of the guy in Gotham City. And what an appropriate last name for a player that has been going off for the Hurricanes this year. But as far as an X factor for NC State, you know, every single week we look around at this offense and we we say, okay, is anyone else going to show up to the party like Kenton mentioned? And every week it's Kevin Concepcion saying, hey, I brought the chips. I brought the drinks. I'm at the party here again. You know, you can only go so long. And I talked about it this week before – Using KC, it becomes a fine line between predictability and creativity. And you have to understand that Miami is going to be focused on KC Concepcion. And so you can get creative as you want, but ultimately they know NC State is really looking for one guy to get the ball to. So I guess my X factor is calling upon everyone else as uh, the offensive coordinator Robert and I did just a couple weeks ago. Kent and I repeatedly bang the drum for more use out of our tight end room, whether that's uh, the freshman in Juice Farine, Trent Penix, who's a senior, or uh, Christopher Tootle, I believe, is also a senior. Haven't quite gotten the production we've expected out of those three this year, either by play design or just haven't quite stepped up to the plate. So this is a game in particular where using getting enough out of your tight end room could end up being the deciding factor for NC State if they're able to pull off this upset. Boy, does that sound familiar because Miami's tight ends get hardly used in the passing game. And you it's feel our pain. You, I feel your pain for sure. And folks, you want to keep it locked because we have our predictions. Final score predictions coming up. Miami and NC State this Saturday, 8 p.m. in Raleigh. This is the Locked On Wolfpack and Locked On Canes crossover right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. FanDuel, I'm having so much fun this football season, my friends. Guys, right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. You can score early this NFL season and college football season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. And for Miami NC State this weekend, Hurricanes are favored by four and a half points. The over under is 45 and a half. So if there's anything you like there, NC State plus four and a half, Miami minus four and a half, the over under, you can take a look. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Fanduel, official partner of the NFL. Here on this Locked On crossover episode, I want to remind you guys, Friday, 11 a.m. to noon, Locked On College Football kickoff live, breaking down all the big games and big storylines. Make sure you tune in live on these YouTube channels, Locked On Canes or Locked On Wolfpack, and any YouTube channel on the Locked On College Network. Alex Dono alongside Kenton Gibbs and Grayson Boone. Uh, I am Locked On Canes. They are Locked On Wolfpack. Uh, guys, I always get, uh, my predictions are always terrible. There've been a couple times when I've maybe gotten the score a little bit close. So I- I'm going to let you guys do the honors. If you want to start, I'm going to give mine, but I'm going to wait till the end. I'm going to cheat off your notes a little bit. So Grayson, h- how do you think this matchup plays out and what's your final score prediction? Well, we keep saying on paper and looking at this one on paper, I, s- I do see a lot of advantages for Miami. I think they match up well against our offensive line. I think potentially their secondary could have a good day against our receiving core that has struggled in, at times. You know, the way that NC State was able to beat Clemson last week was simply a couple ex- explosive plays 
and 14 points off of turnovers in addition to not beating themselves. So it's going to be a very tall task for NC State to have a repeat performance. Can they turn over Tyler Van Dyke? Probably multiple times. You certainly hope so to have a shot, but for now, I'm going to take Miami to win this game. Last week, I used a little bit of reverse psychology. We ended up winning. I got to keep the cycle going. I'm going to take Miami here by, by a score of 24 to 20. So NC State narrowly covers by the hairs on their chinny chin chin. You and I are so close, by the way, in, in thinking about that. Kit Kenton, what about you? You know, I I, I want to say that it was the, uh, what was it, the KFC double down sandwich? Was it the, where they had no <laughs> bread? It was just all chicken and, and all that good stuff on it. Well, Grayson and I, we're pulling the KFC. We're going to double down on the reverse psychology. This here Miami team has a ton of advantages. And yes, we know that Miami somehow with a top 25 offense in the nation, top 25 defense in the nation, has found ways to trick off games that are just insane, right? Like Mario Cristobal got married back in, what was it, 06 or 09? And he said, I'm never taking the knee again. If I ever get divorced, I'm never getting married. <laughs> this is why, that I'm never taking the knee. I don't care what you two love it. For me to ever take a knee for anybody else ever again. He did it at uh, Oregon. He did it at Miami. And yet, this is still one of the better teams um, that I'm finding in the nation here. And so with that being said, I think that NC State doesn't cover. I got 27-20 Miami. I feel like I should be doing a reverse jinx as well. Like I, I, I don't know, I feel weird that I'm also going to pick Miami. And my, my final score, it's almost identical to Grayson's, by the way. Uh, I'm going 23-20 Miami. So I, I guess uh, Kenton would have the over just slightly hitting. Mm -hmm. Grayson and I are going just under uh, 45 and a half, a little bit under that, uh, which is, you know, it, uh, the score is going to be somewhere in that neighborhood, I think, just because of how good these two defenses are yeah. and how erratic uh, both of these offenses can be. You know, I, I do well, another thing that I like about Miami that I hadn't mentioned earlier is field goal kicker Andy Borigalis has been absolutely clutch. And I, I could see it coming down to a, clutch uh, kick situation uh, he's pretty much good even over 50 if that's what it takes so I'm gonna go Miami 23 20 and I it, and if, if Miami does lose locked on Canes listeners you can blame me for not going with the with some kind of a reverse jinx we but, talked them into it yeah we talked them into it absolutely absolutely <laughs> Uh, but I, I appreciate you guys so much. And yeah, make sure you follow our shows, Locked on Canes and Locked on Wolfpack. Uh, anywhere you get your pods, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, uh, available free as well on YouTube. And wow, well, good good luck, guys. And uh, hopefully, if nothing else, a great game on Saturday night. Looking forward to it. Absolutely.